wise, you probably wouldn't have what you do have. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to get into our own personal experiences uh, with imposter syndrome. And if there's any areas in our lives that we feel that we do go through imposter syndrome or exhibit some of those behaviors. So I will toss it to you, ladies. Um, yeah, so I think when, as far as professionally, I don't think I really have ever felt that I had to, or I had imposter syndrome. Just only, I guess the only thing I can say is like, check my attitude and not have people piss me off to the level that they do and act like I'm calm, cool, and collected all the time. <clears throat> but I think the majority of my experiences were recently, like around 20, no, no, no that's not recent, that's like seven years ago, like 25. <laughs> <laughs> I forget how old I am so it's like 25 26 like when I first started actually going faithfully to church and joining church and everything like that and the positions that I'm in a lot of people have degrees and we've talked about this before like I didn't go to school I had my daughter young um, when I just started um, working and so they actually have me in majority of the things I'm a part of I have some type of position and the highest one that I have is um, let me see, um, with the youth director. Um, where I, so I'm in charge of all the kids. And I think when they asked me, I was just like, oh, you want me to plan some events? Yeah, cool. Like, I like kids, sure. And then when, like, I figured out, like, no, nah, like, y'all want me to, like, be a part of these meetings. And you want me to go to these conventions with other churches. First of all, I don't people. So that right there. <laughs> That's true. Kind of like, yeah, I don't, I don't people. So you like, you want me to be around all these people. And then it's like, you know, a lot of others that were a part of, you know, different ministries or whatnot, they're doctor this and, you know, such and such of this. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm just Jennifer. Um, <clears throat> What's up? I'm here. I like kids. So I think that, especially when you look at me, you're just like, who the chick with the tattoos, with the <laughs> RBF 24 seven and like, then we just hear her pull up with like some ratchet ass music to the, and, you know, that's me. But, you know, I think that I had a lot of self doubt and just sitting there listening to people. And then I think it finally just clicked where it's like, no, I'm meant to be here and I know what I'm doing. When people are like, no, you're like, you're really good at what you do. Like, how do you, like, how are you so good? And I'm like, oh, like, you know, I did go to school. I didn't finish, but I did go to school for, you know. Um, early childhood education and education, but I think a lot of the doubt is just it's when it's especially when it's something new, and I think we put titles ahead of everything else sometimes that you know the doctor, the the esquire, or whatever, and just like oh this this ain't me. But um, I'm definitely better now, which is good. But you know you always have that first step in the door and you look around you're like I don't I don't belong here and it's anxiety I was sitting at the meetings quiet like what is going on um but I love it I love the kids I love everything about it and then you know I'll I'll take a pause here but I mean even in like like you said relationships where you're just like what the heck Mm you (laughs) know I think you're a little too good no no I'm honestly I think you're too good for me because I'm kind of great but (laughs) <laughs> I have to tell myself that sometimes. Like, like, no, I'm pretty good. Um, but you know, in all aspects of your life, you can have imposter syndrome, and it's just like you said, it's a lot of stress, it's a lot of anxiety because I think the type of generation that we're in, we've had to deal with a lot. So, that's my piece, real quick. I agree with that. Toy, cool. what say you? Um, I belong everywhere, so I don't know what's wrong with y'all. <laughs> Um, no, honestly, <laughs> y'all know, and I talk about this often. I I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just very curious, and so I end up knowing a lot of stuff because if if I'm in a meeting or something or in any type of situation and I'm unaware, I'm going to do a whole lot of research. So I'm not, I don't feel like that later on. But I still, oftentimes, you know, even at work with my new position. I, I don't know what people really see. And the only thing I can attribute it to is the fact that I over prepare. So I'm just regurgitating things that I read. And everybody could right. be great if they read. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up a book, bitch. I think I said that a couple episodes ago. Like, I don't know. 
So, but no, even even in you know mothering, um, my children they reassure me that I'm doing okay because sometimes I'm just like I am a terrible mother, and zooming out, I'm not. I know that, oh but God. I have I have moments where it's just like, what is happening? Like I don't even know what I'm supposed to do here, mm-hmm. especially as we get you know into the teenage years. Yeah, it's yeah. like how do I respond to this that so it doesn't manifest into you know seven. Um, sessions of therapy in 10 years you know how do I have a conversation to let them know that I'm still on their side and things like that and I think taking a step back being more introspective and really like sifting through just how much we each contribute in every role we're in that helps with imposter syndrome but I think it is a part of our generation that we have that high level of anxiety because you know we came from the generation where you know everyone gets a trophy and you know it, we didn't have to compete we we are the entitled generation but as we progress and get older and meet more challenges we realize that well all of that entitlement kind of left us unprepared and so that's when we start to have self-doubt. Um, and I'm saying we, but I mean, I'm speaking for myself. Mm-hmm. And I, I know that that is something that goes into it. I wasn't in a whole lot of sports or um, extracurricular activities growing up. So when it came to competition and, you know, gauging myself against my peers, it was only on a social level and I wasn't a social kid. Right. So as I got older, all of this is brand new to me mm-hmm. and I'm seeing I am very intelligent and there are a lot of dummies out here. So I don't fall short there, (laughs) but I do worry about, you know, my ability to promote myself because not having that, that history of gauging myself against my peers, Mm -hmm. I don't really know what to aim for, so to speak in a societal mindset. I know what to aim for for me. And that oftentimes seems too much for people. Uh, So then it's like, well, am I not on track with everyone else in my generation, in my field of expertise? Like, you know, so there still is a level of imposter syndrome no matter what. It doesn't necessarily mean that I feel less than. Sometimes it's just like, I just don't fit here. So Mm -hmm. I'm still an imposter of sorts, you know? No, Mm -hmm. that completely makes sense. Yeah. And I think that um, for me... I would say it's it's a bit of both, right? So I think kind of like Jen, I started going to school. I had a child early. So then that kind of got derailed. Um, so there are times where people are throwing out all these credentials that they do have. And then I'm kind of sitting there waiting for someone to be like, er, your elevator stops right here because you can't do not pass go, do not collect $200. Mm-hmm you haven't finished this one thing and this is going to be the hurdle that you're not going to be able to overcome and people are going to then be like well why well, how did you even get here and i think that that is sometimes tough because then it puts the fork in the road of well do i need to do this thing just so i cannot hear this from anyone even though i don't necessarily believe in this institution or this method of getting it accomplished because there's more than one way it's going to catch so I I struggle with that a bit sometimes, Um, but then I'll sit in the meeting and kind of like Toya, I am also curious. So I read a lot. So I know a bunch of random shit. I feel like I should be on a game show somewhere because I think we do it, but (laughs) because that's just me. And even as a kid, I, I read a lot. That's all I did. And I was always on punishment too. So that's why I had to read a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, But (laughs) even as an adult, I still do that. And even when I'm sitting in a meeting, if someone mentions something and I don't really have a lot of knowledge about it, I'll write that down because I'm going to go take that away and Mm -hmm. figure out exactly what that means. Or if I'm a Mm -hmm. part of a process, I'm going to dive all the way in because I don't only want to know what I do. I want to know what you guys do because it helps to change my vantage point. And it gives me more knowledge. And I feel like then you become a force to be reckoned with. And I think sometimes at, when you feel that imposter syndrome, it does make you kind of stay quiet in meetings when things are happening. Because you feel like, well, they couldn't possibly have like missed this thing, right? Because all, all of you are 
up, supposed to be the senior mm-hmm. level person. So it makes you not want to raise your hand because clearly this is stupid. But then you say it to someone and they're like, oh, that was such a great idea. Yep. That's why you can't be consumed by imposter syndrome because sometimes mm-hmm. just because something seems like a no brainer to you, it's not for a lot of That's other right. people. Just because it comes easy to you, it doesn't mean that it comes that easily to others. And I think that's one of the things that we have to constantly reassure ourselves about. Um, And I think that the reason that imposter syndrome comes up a lot for people from our generation, I kind of attribute it to social media, that glitz and glamour that you see. We're only seeing the snapshots that are great of everyone's lives, unless they're a celebrity and then they fuck up. And then we see the shitty part of their life. Um, But it's, that constant weighing yourself against your peers like oh this person's going on trips all the time I ain't gonna nowhere this year or this person's getting promoted on LinkedIn I, well, I'm not getting promoted those kinds of things also chip at you a little bit and I think maybe subconsciously maybe you don't even realize it but it's constantly in your face mm-hmm. so when you're having your down moments I think social media does not necessarily help um but I know we've all talked about how imposter syndrome comes out for us what are some ways that you ladies try to put that to the back of your mind like how do you try to overcome when you feel those those feelings of like angst and anxiety and not feeling maybe enough or feeling like you're going to be found out how do you try to overcome that um I think like I said just being educated and as well prepared as possible so if it takes like you said to take a note down and you don't have to necessarily respond right then and there but the next time it comes up in conversation you know what's going on so you know go do your do your googles um and figure it out <laughs> My <favorite>. so, <laughs> you know so you know what's going on I mean and that's always it keeps you a step ahead and I think that that that'll take away from having self doubt is when you when you know for yourself that mm-hmm. I, I, I'm i not depending on other people to say this to me. Because folks in the room, they could be saying all types of stuff. And they could be just as ill-informed or less informed than you are. Yep. And they're just going off of, you know, what they think. Or, you know, bits and pieces that they literally might be in the meeting Googling on their phone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and throwing <laughs> words out. So, you know, we have so many resources these days to make sure we can stay um well informed about whatever's going on and um, there are options and opportunities to grow within our career and even you know again at parents and and I think that those are the conversations that we talk most about you know work and and being mothers but then for yourself uh, some y'all know I'm I'm quick to disappear off of social media I don't care yeah if I need to take a break I'm taking (laughs) a break because y'all are stressful and not just I like people and and then I try to make I try to be very diligent about who I follow too so mm-hmm. it's no need to follow everybody I'm not following you just because we used to play together outside I don't care <laughs> like no <laughs> no but if 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 I see I'm scrolling my timeline and continue everything that I see that you're doing Generally, it's just some toxicity. It's no one that I'm looking at like, oh, they're doing so much better. I, I'd like to follow people who empower me. I like to follow mm-hmm. people who are of like minds and I see them doing great because that gives me, you know, oh, if they can do it, I can do it, you right. know? But yeah, social media does play a part in some folks feeling like they're not good enough. And I, I encourage everyone to take a step back. You can, you can deactivate and come <laughs> on back when you're ready. That it will it will mess your head up. It yeah. will have you thinking I'm not doing enough. And for all you know, those folks live in a box. Correct. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they struggling. You don't know someone's real life because like you said, it is a glamour reel. And then we are constantly going from zero to a hundred. So it's idolization to cancel. That's it. No in between. Yep. No compassion, no care, no understanding the person's process. It's you are a god. Oh my goodness, throw you out. That's yes. it. Yes. So it's difficult. No, you're right. Because everything is relationship goals, this, mm-hmm. our body goals, this. Girl, you, that girl had work Everybody's going. looking for a hashtag. That's doctor goals. That's not body yeah. goals. Stop it. <laughs> Everybody on Instagram is control V, like pace, pace, mm-hmm. pace. Like not cute at all. Um, I think also, 
Um, it's about confidence also, just knowing that you are in the place that you're in for a specific reason. You have obviously worked hard enough to get there. So whether, you know, you do have the degrees or not, you obviously have the experience and the, the know-how um, to be where you are at that time. Um, and I think that just comes with, you know, your confidence and your self-esteem. Like Cat Williams says, like, self-esteem is this. 